Hello and welcome back. This is my new favorite iron for making the DIY pack rafts. Like the other irons that I recommend, this is a leather iron that I ordered from AliExpress.com and it's also available on Amazon for a bit more money. It's similar to the leather irons I showed in a previous video, but this one has a digital interface and there are a few other differences too all of which make this a better iron, except for one of the differences, which I'll talk about in a minute. First, the positive things. Right out of the box, this iron has the correct plug for North America, so you don't need to use an adapter. Second, it's designed for the 110 volt electricity that we have here, so the temperature indications are reasonably accurate. Third, it heats up in under two minutes, which is much faster than the other irons I've tried. The only downside to choosing this iron is that the shape of the foot is quite rounded on the bottom, and for making pack rafts, we need it to be flat, so you have to file or sand off a fair amount of aluminum. It's not a hard metal, so it's not a big deal if you have something like a belt sander, but if you don't have access to some sort of power tool like that, and you have to do it by hand with sandpaper or a file, I think that would take quite a while. So in that case, it might be easier to choose one of the analog leather irons that have the temperature selection dial, because there's significantly less metal to remove on those. I'll link to the video about those irons at the end of this one, and in the video description. I took this iron apart so I could look inside and make sure that there was enough metal here that when I sanded this part flat, I wouldn't risk damaging the heating element. And you can see that there's enough metal there that it's not a problem so you don't need to take yours apart unless you want to. Now I'm just putting everything back together, and I may as well show this footage in case you decide to take yours apart and you forget how everything fits together. Notice that one of the screws is shorter than the other two, and that goes in the thinner part of the top. After I flattened the bottom of the iron on the belt sander, I sanded the sides down a bit so it was 30 millimeters wide, or just a bit less than that because the seam strips in the DIY Packraft kits are 30 millimeters wide, and if the iron is wider than that, then it'll overhang the edges, and you'll be more likely to damage the tube fabric by accidentally touching it with the hot iron. You can see that the tip of the iron bends up a little bit, and I also flattened that area too. It's useful for heat sealing things that are smaller than the rest of the iron. Those black spots that you can see in the metal are actually holes or voids from when the metal was cast. They're pretty small though, and I'm not concerned about them. After flattening the foot, I checked to make sure that it's actually flat. You can do this with a ruler, or you can just put it face down on a flat surface, and press the corners to see if it rocks at all. If it's not flat, then when you press it against the fabric, you won't get an even application of heat and pressure, so your welds won't be very consistent. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but try to make it as flat as you can, within reason. You can see that there are those two little curved areas at the corners where I didn't sand it all the way down, because if I did, I would have sanded right through the thin area between them. This funny looking little metal thing is a stand for your iron to sit on, so you won't burn your work surface. Peel off the plastic so it doesn't melt, and then just bend this part up. The iron also comes with a couple of these stickers that are coated with a non-stick surface, like Teflon. It's a good idea in theory, and you can put it on if you want, but I found that as soon as I turned the iron on, it started to peel off where it was wrapped around the edges, so I just took it off. My other irons don't have any sort of non-stick coating on them, and it doesn't seem to matter, so I'll probably leave this as bare metal. I might polish it a bit smoother, but I don't really think it's necessary. I'll likely just smooth off the sharp edges. After plugging it in and pressing the buttons, it shows whatever temperature it's set to and the screen flashes red. That means that it's heating up. It's a pretty simple device. You change the temperature up and down by pressing the buttons. I got the best results when this iron was set to 220 degrees Celsius, but you'll need to verify the best setting for your iron, because there will be variation between them. To learn how to do that, watch the heat sealing video that I'll link on the screen now and in the video description below. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.